you said you'd stand up for all the wonderful things that were just talked about, right? And have your voice heard. We need to evangelize because that's what we are called to do. So as we stand together, two million brother knights overall and families spread across the nation and across the world, we really should be excited. We had a great year last year as an order, but this year could be even better. District deputies, I would ask you to make a commitment in your districts to make this the best year that your district could ever have, and maybe the best year in your tenure as a district deputy. Encourage Grand Knights to do the same thing with their councils, and then have their councils have the best year that they could possibly have. You know, at the June State Deputy Meeting up in New Haven, that, that your State Deputy Bruce and Zoe attended, our Supreme Knight posed challenges to the new State Deputies at a meeting that was held over at the McGivney Room in the building where he laid out five leadership virtues, which I thought was an excellent presentation, but I think these leadership virtues apply to you as well as they do to all the state deputies. So let me tell you what they are. The first is integrity. Being leaders who lead by example. Always being men of integrity, as integrity builds trust, which is the key to effective leadership. The second virtue he talked about was humility. Don't be command and control leaders, but be leaders that are Christ-like, full of humility, always looking to give power away rather than hoard it. The third virtue we talked about was courage. Having the courage to do what needs to be done in your councils and districts, even though it may not be popular with the Grand Knight, have the courage to do what needs to be done, particularly in dealing with councils that are resistant to change and may have not grown in recent years. Because we know the definition of insanity, right? Councils keep doing what they've been doing, and things aren't growing, something's got to change. The fourth virtue was unity. Always seek to promote fraternity and unity in your district and councils. Overcome the challenges that present themselves. We all have them. And as leaders, we need to identify them and overcome them. And the last virtue we talked about was foresight. To be future-oriented. Be focused on what your councils need to do, brothers, today and more importantly to tomorrow, in the tomorrow, to grow, to thrive, to prosper, and to bring new men in so that men are getting out of their membership what they're looking to get out of it. You know, make training a priority, brothers. I talked about that this morning, and that's really key. Lean on our resources that we have for that. That's really key. And I'd like to close, I told you I'd be brief tonight, and I'm almost done, but I'd like to close by sharing with you a story that I, my wife and I had the benefit to uh, hear. Jan and I are members of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre uh, in the Southeast Lieutenancy, and we had a meeting in Atlanta back in April of this year, and we were blessed to have address us as a keynote speaker, the CEO of EWTN, Michael Warsaw. And he gave a, a remarkable presentation and a remarkable speech. And those of you that don't know the history of EWTN, it was founded by Sister Angelica in a garage in rural Mississippi, or in rural Alabama, right? And it's grown to be an international powerhouse of Catholic media right now. And Michael Warsaw told a story about how he's often asked, one, you know, you've had a lot of dealings with Sister over the years. You know, what are some of the things that you remember? What are some of her one-liners? What are some of the things that she said that were so pithy that we would say that's, you know, that's Sister. That's her favorite line. And he said, oh, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. I can tell you that right now. Listen to this, guys. Here's, here's what it was. Really? Dare to do the ridiculous so that God can accomplish the miraculous. I repeat that. Dare to do the ridiculous so that God can accomplish the miraculous. Now you think about that. What does it mean? What's ridiculous? Well, she took chances. She had people laugh at her when she started EWTN. And she had people that, when you talk about roadblocks and challenges and naysayers, they were everywhere. But did she listen? No. 
Did you forge ahead as a leader? Yes. EWTN wouldn't be what it is today if not for the will, the passion, the spirit, the courage to change, and the courage to do what she needed to do because she knew she had the Holy Spirit on her side. And that's how EWTN got to be the EWTN that you know and love today. Salt and light, obviously, here in Canada. But that's a great story. So how does that relate to you, brothers? I would challenge you to listen to Mother's words. Listen to Sister Angelica's words and think about this. Have the courage, have the creative courage to do what needs to be done with your councils in your districts. Overcome those challenges that you have. Because through you and through the councils, and it might not be easy, it wasn't easy for Sister Angelica. But through you and through your council leaders, you can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, accomplish the miraculous. I'm confident in that. You just have to do it. Make this year, brothers, the best year that you can have possibly in your district and your councils. Know that you have our support every single day and never hesitate to lean on us for anything that you need because of the Supreme Council, we're always there for you. You know, our job is to help you be successful and we are committed to doing that. And I want to really thank you. I want to thank you for your leadership and thank you for all your hard work and passion for keeping the spirit of Blessed Michael McGivney alive in your jurisdictions every day in the great province of Ontario. Viva Yezid.